Chapter 6 Jimmy likes school. She just doesn't get there much since her mum died. If Jonah doesn't get her to the bus stop on time, then there isn't much she can do because that bus only comes past once a day and there's no way Jonah's driving an hour to get her there. Sometimes the school calls, but they only have Dad's old mobile number, the one Jonah has been using since Dad threw it against the wall and smashed the screen. And when Jonah answers, the school doesn't even ask to leave a message. It's not like Jimmy is the only one not going to school. Most times she goes, they're lucky if half the class is there, and they only go over the same stuff they've gone over the day before anyway. Doesn't bother Jimmy. School just isn't that important. But reading is important. Her mum loved reading. Every night they hopped into bed, and Jimmy would choose from the pile of books they borrowed from the mobile library, and her mum would start reading. When Jimmy started school, she thought that she would learn straight away, but it didn't work like that, not for Jimmy. It just takes time, love, her mum would say, but it was more than that. And then her mum died and nothing really seemed to matter anymore. Now Jimmy wonders if her dad even remembers that she can't read, or maybe he just figures that the school fixed her, like the way Jonah fixes the telly by sticking a coat hanger in the top. Yesterday her dad saw Jimmy looking through one of the books from the shelf above the telly, she liked the smell of the pages, all dusty and warm. Is it any good, love? he asked her. Jimmy didn't answer. She looked at the picture on the cover and wondered why her dad couldn't work out that it wasn't a kid's book she was sniffing. She guessed he just hadn't noticed. Her dad never seemed to really notice much these days. Sometimes that was a good thing, like last week when she took his bike for a spin along the track and stacked it against a rock because she thought you had to pedal backwards to work the brakes. That was how Jimmy's old bike had done it. But she'd grown out of her old bike years ago. When her dad saw the wheel, all bent to the side and out of shape, he rubbed his eyes and shook his head, like he couldn't quite remember when he'd done that. Jonah smiled at Jimmy and whispered, I'll get you a bike for your birthday if you like, and Jimmy felt a buzz in her legs just thinking about it. Before coming here, Jimmy's family had moved around a lot. Jimmy couldn't remember how many times they had stuffed everything they owned into their trailer and gone. She couldn't remember how many schools she'd started at, or how many friends she'd made just to up and leave without so much as a goodbye. When they found this place, though, Jimmy's mum said they were staying put. This is where we'd been headed all along, kids. Jimmy's dad said, rubbish, it's just where the work is. But they hadn't moved again. They'd brought an old bird bath, and Jimmy helped her mum keep it full and clean. Her mum planted a lemon tree, because all houses need a lemon tree, she said, and as soon as the first lemons were ripe, their mum started making pancakes, with lemon and sugar every Sunday for breakfast. She even started a veggie garden, filling an old bath with dirt that stank and singing to the seas until they all pushed their way up towards her voice. When she died, Jimmy and Jonah and Dad had planted a wattle out the front because wattles were Mum's favourite tree in the whole world. That was when Jimmy knew they wouldn't leave again. They couldn't. Even when Jimmy's dad lost his job along with the rest of the town and had to find a new job working shifts, which took him away from home for days at a time, this is where their mum had been happiest, and so they would stay, because this is where their mum was. No one else would want to move into an empty town full of nothing but memories anyway. But Jimmy likes exploring the memories. When Jimmy wanders, her thoughts stop buzzing and the ache at the back of her head disappears. She takes a pet rat, Raticus, with her, snug in her pocket, or perched on her shoulder hidden under her hair. It's nice knowing she's exploring with someone. She likes imagining who else walked where she is walking, or who else touched this exact spot. She likes imagining what they would have been thinking when they sat on this rock, or climbed this tree, or looked at this creek. She likes imagining what their lives are like. She likes imagining that some part of that person is still here, just a shadow of them, that if she concentrates hard enough, then she could almost be that person, just for a moment. Jimmy explores a lot. She explores the houses left to rot when the mines closed and everyone lost their jobs. There's loads of stuff to find in those houses. Forgotten things hidden under fallen roof plaster or kicked under mouldy carpet. Once Jimmy even found a pair of socks with the ten twenty dollar bills rolled up inside. Her dad said he would have to hand them into the cop station on his way to work, but then Jimmy found the socks tucked into his drawer. She explores the road that winds its way out of town, past the bus stop that has only two times on the timetable, and eventually reaches the water. Some days, Jimmy bundles Raticus into her pocket and throws off most of her clothes and goes swimming, ignoring the extreme danger, actung, crocodiles inhabit these waters, attacks cause injury or death sign that sticks out from the bank. Jonah has read that sign 
to her often enough for Jimmy to know it off by heart. She just figures there isn't enough meat on her to satisfy a hungry, hungry croc. Anyway, not many people come fishing around here anymore, and everyone knows that the crocs follow the fishermen. She explores further up the hill, leaving her house behind her, wandering all the way to the edge of town, where the windows of the shops are boarded up or broken. The last shop to shut was the milk bar. Now it's a 50 minute drive to get a bottle of milk, meaning that more often than not Jimmy eats her cereal with water or doesn't bother with breakfast at all. There's only one place Jimmy hasn't explored, down the hill, down near the centre. Jonah and Jimmy had headed down there once but stopped, there was a feeling down there, a sort of sadness in the air, they both turned back without saying a thing about it. And then today at school some of the kids had been talking, saying how lucky those people were in the centre, how they had everything. Good clothes and thousands of toys and books and computers and teachers and doctors who lived right there in the centre so you didn't have to drive for two days if you were sick. And one of the boys, Max, he said he saw a container get delivered to the centre and inside it was full of brand new bikes. Only a few kids at Jimmy's school had a bike. The school used to have a couple for the kids to use but they had disappeared just as soon as they'd come. Are you sure about that container? Jimmy had asked and Max had spat in his hand to double promise. But Jimmy remembered her mum and dad talking about the Santa when they first moved in. It's not right, her mum had said, and Jimmy's ears had pricked up. That's no way to treat people. Remembering that, Jimmy couldn't make sense of what Max was saying. It hadn't sounded like the kind of place that would give out bikes. Maybe things had changed, or maybe Max was just wrong. Now lying in bed, the centre is all Jimmy can think about. Outside, the wind has picked up, so it almost sounds as though waves are crashing against the dirt outside their house. The wind has never sounded like that before. And suddenly, Jimmy needs to know. She needs to know what's down there. So she grabs her mum's book and her backpack and tiptoes down the stairs and climbs out the bathroom window, avoiding the creaking door, so she doesn't wake her dad, and starts down the hill. Past the gum tree that she climbs almost every day. Past the rock where she once found a red-bellied black snake. Past the termite mound that is taller than Jimmy is, and all the way to the bottom of the hill. It's then that she finds the fence. It was Jonah who taught Jimmy to explore. Nothing could ever stop them, especially not a fence. A fence just means there's something interesting inside, Jonah used to say. And just because this fence has lights and cameras and rolls and rolls of razor wire on top, that doesn't mean she can't get through. That just makes it more of a challenge. Jonah taught Jimmy how every fence has a weak spot. It's only a matter of finding it. Jimmy sits in the dirt for a long time watching the fence and the lights and the shadows and the cameras and then she moves towards the fence. She just has to find its weak spot, is all.